morning with your kids. Hola, ni hao, konnichiwa, assalamu alaikum, shalom, mahaba, morning mali wanji, namaste, jambo, bienvenidos, hi, my name is Jed Lee and this is the Reading With Your Kids podcast. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We are so delighted and so very honored that you're joining us in our mission to help all families grow closer through reading. Please be sure to tell all of your family and friends about the show and please subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, wherever you find your podcasts. Our guest today is Julie Winterbottom. She is here to celebrate her great activity book. It's called What a Blast! Before we invite Julie into the studio, we want to let you know that this episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast is brought to you by Many People to Love by Anna Maria Didio. Anna Maria Didio's new book, Many People to Love, tells the story of a young girl adapting to the food, language, and culture of her new family and will open the conversation between parent and child during these difficult, wonderful, but challenging times. This book is appropriate for kids who've been adopted or foster kids of all ages, helping them to explore the seesaw of responses when acclimating to a new family. It will also encourage open and honest exploration about what children are thinking and feeling within their own unique family. It's a beautiful book that that opens up that conversation about adoption and about family and about love. Check it out today, Many People to Love by Anna Maria Didio. This episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast is also brought to you by The Magic of Amigo by Noria Kamahort. Noria loves to talk to little kids in a language they don't understand. She's been doing it with many different groups of young students for many years, and it's been fantastic. She's taken this wonderful immersion experience into a full 10-month curriculum for preschoolers ages 2 to 5 years old. It includes the methodology, themes, activities, songs, and useful links that you can use to help your kids learn how to speak Spanish. Amigo was Noria's first link with her new students, a nice gray stuffed elephant with whom the kids and Noria got to know each other's names. Then he became the main character of the books needed to complete a first year of Spanish immersion. The mission of Noria's project is to help provide quality education to every child and to build a future where all kids have the same opportunities to succeed. Check it out today, The Magic of Amigo by Nuria Kamahort. Join us right now from the beautiful town of Beacon in the great state of New York. Our guest is here today to celebrate a book that I absolutely love. It's called What a Blast. Please welcome to the show the author, Julie Winterbottom. Hey, Julie, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. I I have to ask you, please tell everybody what What a Blast is all about. Well, What a Blast is a fart activity book. <laughs> it's got everything you could imagine that you could read or do or dream up about farts. And it's for kids. <laughs> the publisher says it's for kids seven and up. Um, I feel like kids a little younger that than that would also love it. And I'm also finding that um, grown-ups love it. <laughs> Absolutely. Absol- it's been an awfully long time since I was a six-year-old. And I love this book. I mean, I just, I, I, I got it. I, I, I opened it up and I, I just started laughing. And the, and there's so much there. We're not talking about a 15, 20 page book. This is a, this is a real meaty book. It is. It's, um, I think about 104 pages of nonstop. Funny stuff about farts, 
funny things to do involving farts, but also a lot of really cool information about flatulent and farts. So there's an educational part that's kind of slipped in there. Um, I think kids and parents will end up learning a tremendous amount about uh, the science of farting, believe it or not, the history of farting, um, words that people in different countries use for the sound of a fart. I mean, it's it's got cultural, history, science, art, kids write. Um, it's really, you can see now how I got 104 pages out of this because it's farting from every possible angle. Farting from A to Z and all around the world. Exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, it's... Farts, that's one of those words that just makes everybody laugh, especially kids. And I was going to say especially boys, but it doesn't matter. My daughter laughed at fart jokes, you know, all the time. I don't know why it's taking us so long to make the connection. Okay, kids are going to laugh at this. It's, it's part of our world. It's part of human nature. It's part of our physiology. It happens. It's not pleasant when it happens next to you or in an elevator, but it happens. It's part of life. It makes kids laugh. That means kids are interested in it. Wow. How, why is it taking so long for us to say, well, why don't we take that interest and teach kids about, because there's a lot of science going on that's causing this gas to come out of us. Exactly. It's a great opportunity, really. And, you know, I also believe that when a kid is emotionally engaged and humor engages you emotionally, they learn better and they're and they remember things and they're just and I also think it makes them love reading. Mm -hmm. If they're having a really good time laughing, maybe laughing with their parents, with their siblings, they're going to just feel like reading is fun um, and it's true that there's so much, I mean, I have science in this book in the most fun way. Like it starts out with a, um, sort of cutaway of the human body and you learn from the food going into your mouth and you start chewing how it is <laughs> that gas is created and it really all happens in the large intestine. Mm -hmm. And so they get just the right amount of science and it's got a funny illustration and so, you know, you finish this book and you, yes, you've laughed a lot, but you also feel smart. Mm -hmm. You feel like, I know a lot of stuff that I didn't know before. Yeah. And um, it's, so I'm really proud of that part of it, that I'm slipping in a lot of educational content. Yeah. I, I mean, you're not going to get a six or seven year old to sit down and pay attention to a lesson on the digestive system. Exactly. It's just not going to, even the most curious STEM focused kid, not 104 pages. That, absolutely not. You know, but if you can make a kid laugh, grab a kid's interest. And by the way, this is what makes that tooting out of your bottom. Exactly. And then, you know, sprinkled throughout the book are all these really fun facts about flatulence. It's a feature that I call the smelly truth. <laughs> And some of them have science in them, too, and they're just amazing things, like um, the record for the longest fart, and this was documented, I think, by the Guinness Book of World Records, is two minutes and 42 seconds. Oh. Now, that's just astonishing to me and funny. Um, when a fart exits your body, it can go seven miles per hour. That's kind of they've measured <laughs> The velocity. I mean, there's just, it's, um, there's a scientist who was studying flatulence and he had people wear these mylar pants so that he could collect all the gas and then had expert judges come in and sniff it to try to determine what makes, pardon me if this is too gross, but what makes the stinkiest farts. And you know, kids learn, um, about foods that make you fart more, but they learn it in a really fun way. There's a, a word search puzzle where they're searching for all the um, foods that make you fart a lot. And uh, 
to me, that's much more fun than, as you say, someone just saying, hey, these are the kind of foods that make you fart. They're, they're always engaged with this book. Mm-hmm. There's always something they're doing. So I think um, in some ways that makes it a really good book for a kid who might not be a naturally voracious reader. Mm-hmm. You know, the kid who doesn't sit down with a novel and sustained reading, um, it's good for a kid who's obviously drawn to the humorous topic, but also maybe isn't that keen on reading mm-hmm. because there's something to do on every page. Um, the information comes in, in chunks so that you can read something, get it, do it, laugh at it, and then move on to something new. Mm-hmm. And there, there's been scientific studies that show the best way to learn is by learning in chunks. And yeah. instead of trying to sit down and learn, here's the start and there's the finish, and we're just going to sit here and pound it until we, until we get it in. No, the science shows take a chunk, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, take a break. Come back at it, add another chunk, break, add another chunk. And, you know, I just love when science is able to come back and say, no, we've kind of proven this. This is the way it works best. Yeah, it's great. I like that it's supported too. And, you know, I also think – the fact that you can, there's something very social about this book. It's a book that's really meant to do with your family and your friends and your parents. And I think, um, I can just picture a kid doing this. Um, there's a section that's kind of a quiz and it's what kind of farter are you? And so you answer a bunch of questions and they reveal if you're a very shy farter or a very proud farter. And I mean, I can just see a kid quizzing everyone in their family, including their parents, and they're reading the whole time they're doing that mm-hmm. and laughing. Mm-hmm. So um, it's just very social book, I think. Yeah. Who would have thought a book about farts would bring people together? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> You mentioned that that there's uh, we learn a little bit about different cultures. Um, what's the most interesting cultural fart fact that you discovered in your research? Um, probably um, this just fascinated me and shocked me. There is a tribe in Brazil, the Yano Mami Indian tribe, and they sometimes greet each other by farting it's it's part of the culture and that just pleased me no end (laughs) that you know to take something that a lot of people are so embarrassed about and just make it like a welcoming greeting i think is just marvelous so that was one of the coolest things um that i learned about another culture that's 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 pretty fascinating um I, you know, my dad was one of those guys who could seemingly fart on demand. I, I don't seem to have that talent. Um, I, I wonder how that, that, that those, that tribe is able to do that. Just like, oh, hey, Tommy's coming down the road. Let me lie. I wondered the same thing. <laughs> and I need to delve into this a little more. I don't know if it's like maybe they would greet someone after eating a meal and then that would make it much easier. But you're right. It's very rare that someone can fart on command. However, there was a famous French performer in the 1800s named Joseph Pujol and his stage name was Petoman, which means like fart maniac. And he had this very rare ability to fart on command and to take a lot of air into <laughs> his behind and then could control the sounds that he would make. And so he did a whole stage show in Paris that at one point was the highest earning stage show in the city. I mean, he was just bringing in crowds and he could make the sounds of barnyard animals. He could sort of toot out a melody. He could blow out a candle with his farts. And so there are rare people 
who really can fart on command and in a very entertaining way. <laughs> I, 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 that would be an interesting theatrical experience, I think. Um, I hope it was yes. a big theater with a big airy and lots of great ventilation. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. You want a uh, a modern circulation system in that theater. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so what was the research when you're doing this book? Did you have to interview people about their farts? or? That's a really good question. I, You know, I didn't interview a lot of people. I did, um, when I was doing the section about what the word for fart is in many different languages and also what the sound is. Um, like, you know, we, I don't know, we kind of go or what we make a sound with our mouth. But when I was doing that, I had to um, talk to and email a bunch of people to find out what is the right way that you say this. But for the most part, um, I read a lot of books. I did a lot of research on the internet. Um, and that's most of, it was hours and hours and hours of research. And um, one thing that was great for me personally about this book is that I did most of the research and writing kind of at the beginning of the pandemic. Mm. And it was such a heavy, isolating time. And I felt so lucky that I had farts to distract me. And so I just dove in for months, just finding out everything I possibly could. And then sort of coming up with funny stories. So there's a lot of um, sort of fill in stories that are, that were really fun to write. Um, and it, it kind of got me through the beginning of the pandemic. Wow. Saved by a fart. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or many farts. <laughs> I, I can't imagine what kind of ads Google was sending you away after all the fart research and searches you were doing. It's funny that you say that because I actually still have a Google alert for the words fart and farting. I never turned it off and it's amazing what I get. But um, one of the best things I received and it was while I was still writing the book. So I included it in the book was um, the car company, Tesla, added an upgrade to their cars, which was a fart function where you could program the seats in your car to fart. And you could program the horn to make a fart sound. You could program your signal indicators to fart. And that just thrilled me. And so I managed to get that into the book. And then about a month ago, I met someone who owned a Tesla and he took me for a ride and showed me how all this farting works in the car. <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> oh, I think Elon needs to find something else. To do. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. What is he doing spending his time putting farts into the seats of his car? I, you know, and, I don't know. I don't know. That's, <laughs> uh, that's incredible. What inspired this book? I, I know you said you started writing it at the beginning of the pandemic, but there was something that, that sparked this idea in you. Well, it's funny because unlike my um, my other books, which are Pranklopedia, which is a book of pranks for kids, and Frightlopedia, which is a sort of encyclopedia of scary stuff, those were both my ideas. This book was actually um, the idea of the editor at Workman Publishing, who I done most of my books with. And so she was brainstorming in a meeting one day and said, we need to do a fart activity book, of course. And um, one of her colleagues used to work with me at Nickelodeon magazine. And I consider it a compliment that he immediately said, Julie Winterbottom has to write this. <laughs> so, uh, so that's how it happened. So she called me up and I said yes immediately. And that was the the way it got going. That's awesome. Uh, do you have uh, fart jokes in the book? I do. I mean, you can't really do a fart book without mm -hmm. fart jokes. Mm -hmm. And um, so I have, they're sort of scattered throughout the book. I have a lot of classic ones, um, but I'm kind of proud that I managed to make up some original fart jokes because it's not that easy to do. Okay. Um, one of them is why did the worker in the sandwich shop fart so much no idea 
the boss told him to cut more cheese. Ah. Pretty bad. Sorry. <laughs> um, what did the big fart say to the little fart? No idea. Everything I know, I, le I learned in kinder farting. Uh. <laughs> They're pretty bad. But it is, uh, there are probably at least 40 fart jokes running throughout the book. My favorite, my favorite that I used to open up my show until I realized that the teachers really didn't like it. They weren't going to invite me back to the school. Kids loved it. It's uh, what's invisible and smells like carrots. I don't know. Bunny farts. I love it. I love it. <laughs> there, um, I should have put that one in, but it's very good. Ah, oh, there's a, oh, this one I, no, no, I didn't make this up, but I like it. Um, what do you call a dinosaur fart? An old fart. Good try. A blast from the past. A blast from the <laughs> Anyway, it's, uh, they're sort of the kind of joke that you laugh and groan simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Classic dad jokes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, what's next for Julie Winterbottom? Um, I, I can't even guess what it might be. No. <laughs> Well, believe it or not, I've done a real sharp turn off of humor and off of farts. And um, my next book is as different as it could possibly be from the fart book. It's a nonfiction picture book biography of a, an ecologist who, um, who died about 10 years ago, but was very instrumental in getting laws um, against water pollution passed, but had a very interesting life as a scientist. So complete divergence from the kind of books I've done so far, but um, I'm excited about it. Yeah, well, that sounds exciting. I And I think people should be excited about What a Blast, because you know, we've obviously had a lot of fun here today, but just for the for for the, the the things that we're talking about, um, engaging kids, helping kids learn um, about something that's important to know about, but that they're not going to be interested in otherwise, uh, or that not a lot of kids would be interested in. And I especially think, and I was sharing with Julie before we started um, recording, that there is a young a six year old down the street that is struggling with reading. And part of the, and because of the struggle, he doesn't read. You know, I think there's there's a lot of kids like, oh, well, he can't read. No, he probably can, but it's hard, and there, it's a challenge for him. And the best way for him to deal with it is to not do it. I think he this is a book that's going to engage him. Uh, I, I, it's it's going after, after we finish this interview when he gets home from school this afternoon he's going to get my copy of what a blast and i know it's going to engage him and i you know in a month from now he's going to say i've read all 104 pages of this book yeah i love hearing that and i've already had the same experience where kids who are not that into reading they kind of can't resist mm -hmm. i mean it the cover says fart games fart puzzles fart pranks and more farts and that's just, it's irresistible, I yeah. think. And then once you open the book, you know, it's got these wonderful illustrations um, that are a little on the cartoony side. And I think that also helps a kid who's not that comfortable with reading because it just feels like it's fun mm -hmm. and I'm going to laugh. And it's not intimidating. Mm -hmm. You never have a page that's solid text, which I think can be very intimidating mm -hmm. for a kid who's not a great reader. Mm -hmm. um, so you just, every single page has at least two hilarious illustrations and then very accessible um, text. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that you just generally have an easy experience the whole time you're reading it. Yeah. And you're laughing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Julie, tell me where people can go to find out more about What a Blast and find out more about you and all of your books. Well, you can go to my website, which, which is juliewinterbottom.com. And um, the book is available in 
most bookstores, on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, other online sellers. Um, and uh, so that's the best the best way to find it and to find me. Okay. We've had a great time speaking to the author of What a Blast, Julie Winterbottom. Julie, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Please be sure to join us for the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Nicole Brewer, telling us all about games from all over the world. That's the next episode of the podcast. Hey, if you are the author of a fantastic children's book from anywhere in the world, we would love to help you celebrate that book. You know, there are literally thousands of books published every single... You thought I was going to say year. No. No. There are thousands of books published every single month. It's really hard for an author to stand out amongst that crowd of books. It's especially hard for an author who is an indie author or a self-published author to stand out in, amongst that crowd. We would love to help you. You can be a guest here on the Reading With Your Kids podcast. And you can find out how to be a guest by going to our website, readingwithyourkids.com, and clicking on the Authors Click Here button at the top of the page. You can also find out how you can submit your book to our Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read panel. And you can find out how you can be a part of our monthly promotion program. Learn all about that and more at readingwithyourkids.com, clicking on that Authors Click Here button at the top of the page. I want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Of course, I want to start by thanking our guest, Julie Winterbottom. Please be sure to check out What a Blast and have a fantastic time with your kids. I also want to thank our sponsor, Many People to Love by Anna Maria Didio. And also The Magic of Amigo, a great bilingual curriculum by Nuria Kamahort. I want to thank my team, Fatima Khan, Rory Grady, Mirabella Q, Jordan Saley. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. Most of all, we all want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.